One thing I can tell y'all, what you see is what you get. Me and Deacon Ronald are who we say we are. We don't try to put off this little phony relationship. Because you know, it's a lot of folks going around playing a little act like, um, we're just, we're just so good together. And then, they don't even sleep in the same room. <laughs> they don't like each other. Wow. No, I'm for real, for real. Right? Seriously. And that's, that's sad. That's really, really sad, y'all. But it's a lot of people. That are living in front of cameras. In front of Instagram, Facebook. Putting on a show. I don't need to impress nobody but God. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people can't handle the truth. <gasps> Did she really just say things? You listen to worse when you listen to music. Mm -hmm. When you watch the movies. Oh my God. I watched the I sat there to watch the movie with my husband and my daughter yesterday. And I almost jumped through the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing. I was Oh my God! I was very animated. <laughs> very animated. My daughter was like, Mommy, you need to watch a few more movies. I'm like, no, I don't. This is crazy. Like it was it was a trip. I don't even want to tell y'all the name of it, but it was but the crazy part was maybe I should tell y'all. Because the movie was about this really well put together Caucasian professional man. He meets this young lady in the vegetable aisle at the grocery store. Uh, I think it was called Fresh. Oh. I think it was called <laughs> Fresh. Crazy. So he impresses her. You know, he gives her a few days before he texts her. She got she got a, a, a sister. Uh, a, a real sister uh, for her best friend and you know some of us sisters ain't stupid so we investigators by nature right, right. we all in the business long story short this man was a straight creep and he wined and dined her and then he invited her on a romantic getaway mind you they only knew each other like right a few days and the girlfriend was like, well, where is he? Ta I don't know. It's a surprise. She said, girl, I don't do surprises. Right. You need to tell me where you're taking me. And the long story short, this gullible, desperate young lady, because she was looking for something, got caught up. And in the movie, this man was removing body parts and selling them to these elitists that were eating. Wow. And I'm going I'm to leave it at that because it's pretty disgusting. But I got reeled into and the Lord kept telling me, pay attention. Whenever God allows me to watch something like that, it is not for entertainment. It is for teaching. Amen. Because, no, you're not watching it. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And me and Dick and Ronald will have a chat with you, young man. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. Listen, Amen. I'm everybody, Mama. Amen. I want us to really pay attention because what's being presented is to dummy you down. Yeah. It's to make you think, oh, it's just fantasy. It's Hollywood. It's so much truth in all of it. They, the devil's biggest trick is to make the world think he doesn't exist. And they literally are telling you what they're doing. So how many of you have ever watched The Simpsons? I've never watched I mean, I've never seen it. Okay, so let me tell you why. Do you know that the creator of that show is a 
very uh, high, I think a 33 degree Mason. Uh, I'm not surprised. I think he, he is a 33 degree Mason. So guess what? The stuff, the cartoons, a lot of the cartoons are created by some very wicked, evil people. Yes, they are. And their messages are conveyed through those cartoons. Absolutely. It is to lure you in, the games, all of it. The music. I want to go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 3, we are on the, ladies, we are on the seventh church. Revelation chapter 3, starting at the 14th verse. Out of respect of the reading of the word, rest into your feet. Praise God, praise God. Amen. I need y'all to get settled. We here? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father, I come before your throne of grace. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you will move mightily in this place. Father, I call on the legion of your most trained, skillful, powerful, warring, protective, healing, and ministering angels. Father, there has been such spiritual warfare around the body of Christ. But you have given us all power, might, and dominion. And Lord, I pray right now that you will decrease every single person in this room. And allow your spirit, man, turn the phone off. To rise up. I ask that the Holy Spirit will take the scales out of our eyes, allow our ears to hear, and this word to penetrate deep within our hearts. Yes, Father, I ask that the heavens, the gates and the, 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 the floodgates of heavens. Open up and your Shekinah glory fill this place. Father, that this be a rhema word direct from your mouth to my ears, from my mouth to their ears. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. I ask that the Holy Spirit will place a ring of holy fire around this building. Yes. That if there is any distraction, yes, that the enemy be plucked and removed. Immediately, Amen. cleave the tongue of every witch, warlock, dust blower, soothsayer, and demonic entity. Father, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. They have absolutely no authority in this house. And I pray that you will prepare the hearts and the minds and the bodies to receive your word. That we can walk out of here today. As new creatures in Christ. Fill us up. Fill us up. Fill us up. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Revelation chapter 3. Starting at the 14th verse. I read New King James. And it reads. The Luke warm church and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things says the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. This Amen. is the reading of the word. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you. The title of this message is Somewhere in the Middle. Somewhere in the Middle. 14. And anytime you see red writing, it's Jesus speaking. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the amen, the amen. First of all, says the amen. Did anybody catch that? Yes. The amen says these things. When you finish speaking, praying, talking to someone and you say amen, it means you're in agreement. Yes. But if they are speaking negative or causing dissension and division and schism and you don't speak up, but you say, I'm in, you're agreeing to discord. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, this is who's speaking. Let there be no confusion about who's given this word. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the seventh church that Apostle John is commissioned to address. The warning is given from the absolute tap, the head, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one. He who defeated the grave went into descended into hell and then ascended into heaven and who is now seated at the right hand of the Father to judge the living and the dead, Jesus Christ himself. And he tells John to write to the seventh church that he is the faithful. He is the amen. He is the true witness of the beginning of creation. Well, Genesis 1 verse 26 says, then God said, let us, let us, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Amen. Yeah. So 
If he made man in his image, then does God look like us? No. We look like God. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. We look like Jesus. Yes. Hmm? He said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Now, if God gave us all that dominion, why are we so broken? Amen. Why are we stuck yes. in a wreck? Why does Satan have so much authority over you? Because you allow it. Because you have been given dominion. You have been given authority. But you have also allowed doors to open in your life that you choose not to close. Or it could be the other way around. There were doors open in your childhood that you had no control over. But years down the road, you now have control Amen. to shut yes. the doors. Why do you still keep those doors open? I'll tell you why. Because a lot of people like victim mentality. A lot of people don't want to forgive. A lot of people want to have an excuse to keep blaming stuff on other people. Huh? Amen. Well, well, well. He is letting us know that you have dominion. Laodicea is in modern Turkey, and it just so happens that it was known for three major industries. I'm going to teach, preach this thing, okay? Perhaps the greatest banking and financial center in Asia Minor, in the ancient world, it was one of the wealthiest cities in the world at that time. Currency changing. They were minting coins. It was an occupation. They were very wealthy. And they also had a very large Jewish population. But it was also a place where they worshiped Caesar along with other little G-gods. Huh? The second industry that they were known for was they had a medical school. A world-renowned medical school that was known in the ancient world to have developed an ear salve that would heal, heal ear problems and eye salves that help eye conditions and they, they, they made this ear salve of spice and a Perigean powder and they discovered something. They started putting together herbs and roots and, and, and concocting things and using pharmacia to produce pharmaceuticals. Mm. Pharmacia, if you look up the root word, is connected to witchcraft. Do I got any biblical scholars yes. in the house? Huh? So, 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 let's look at what we have for the seventh church. We got a church that's uh, uh, surrounded by money. It's surrounded by this medical school. Huh? It's surrounded by pharmaceuticals being made and a large Jewish population. Right. So what does that tell you? Money. Oh, they was in the class. Sa sounds very familiar to what is going on in modern history. Yes, you know. So the third thing that they were known to be industrious for was they also produced a very glossy black wool. And it was a prized wool by all the wealthy all over the world. The word got out just like the color purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lydia, the lady who was the seller of purple, when, when people found out she got an amazing product, people who were very rich 
desired this wool. No one knew exactly where the origin was, but they uh, 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 came up with that they had some type of sheep that they were breeding in that region, and, and it was a special breed of sheep, or perhaps they were dying it, but it was never really established where they created such wonderful product. It was of an unmatched quality, and it allowed the Laodiceans to corner the market and to produce tremendous wealth from it. So we can also look at it as the fashion industry. Uh-oh. Y'all better catch it. The cash, the clothes, the cribs, my pastors in the house. Come on now. The calls. And, 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 and we use that very often because it's so true. So this city was built on greatness, right? It was, it was founded on greatness. It, it, it actually received its name by Antiochus II, who named it, now trip on this, in honor of his sister slash wife. Mm. Laodicea. Lao yeah, Sister Dash White. Oh. They were very well put together, but they had one weakness in the structure of the city. The city had a poor water supply system. But other than that, they were well off. See, the water was being supplied on a six mile aqueduct. And it came from the hot springs of Hierapolis. Okay? So this water came from a hot spring, but it had to travel six miles to get to the city. So by the time, look how, look how, look how God just connects dots. By the time it arrived to where they were, the water was now lukewarm. Right. Right. Oh, somebody right. better catch that. Right. Huh? Which is not the only reason why Jesus referred to it yeah. as lukewarm. Huh? There were other reasons. Now, I want to share something that the city <coughs> had a major, major earthquake. And it literally devastated the entire city and, and surrounding area. But the people were so well off. This was in 60 AD that they refused the government's help to rebuild their city. So they used their own resources. They used their own money. The, 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 the citizens did the unthinkable. They worked together and rebuilt it Amen. together. I want you to, get, again, beloved, look at the similarities to the foundation of this particular church. Jewish, huge medical school producing pharmaceuticals, banking industry, prize wool, fashion industry for the world. Do you see? The parallels? Yeah. It's like that right now in America. Mm -hmm. The Jewish people own just about every industry. Sounds very familiar. Just mm -hmm. like today's industry. The city yes. of compromise, though. It was known as a city of compromise. Huh? Why is that? Well, we're going to talk about it. Jesus ends up calling it lukewarm, right? Because he said he knows your works and they aren't hot and nor they're cold, but they are somewhere in the middle. Uh-oh. Saints, I want you to ask yourself just exactly where are you at with your walk with Jesus? Are you somewhere in the middle? Huh? You're not Cold, cause you're here. Uh oh, you 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 you're not cold, cause you're here, right? Mm. Are you are you not cold, cause you're here? 
trick question. Huh? You better ask yourself. <laughs> right. You praying? Yeah. Maybe even listening to a little, little Christian TV and a little gospel music every now and again. But you're not on fire either, are you? I told y'all, y'all better put your seatbelts on because this is going to be a bumpy ride. Something is missing, beloved. What is it, saints? Jesus warns the Laodiceans that because of neither being uh, 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 hot or cold, he said he would vomit them out of his mouth. Whoa, 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 Let me, let me, let me let you really chew on what I am saying. Would you really want Jesus to meet you and say that to you? I would never want Jesus to say those words to me about me. I would never want him to put me in that category. Amen. That would be so sad. But I want us to look at what lukewarm really is. It's the same thing as you compromising, you're negotiating, right. you're rationalizing, and you're downright dangerous. Mm -hmm. Jesus is literally telling this church, you make me sick. Mm -hmm. You make me so sick, I'm going to vomit you out my mouth. I'm sick of you. And because of their indifference in their walk, they don't even understand that they're a real danger to the walk to the world. Oh, See, those that look at them, I go to church. I get on prayer line. I, I, I go to Bible study. I'm a Christ believer. Uh-oh. Christ followers view themselves as being all right. They, 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 they think that they're living the right way. But to an unbeliever, you would appear as a fake, a phony, and an insincere believer. Why would I follow you when you're a fake and a phony? Come on. You telling me what you believe in, but you're not living what you say you believe in. Right, if no. Jesus was this great transformer and you died to old things and created new, why do you still do what you've been doing? Why are you still living like you've been living? Why are you acting like you used to have? Why are you sleeping around, getting high, lying, stealing, conniving? Why? But you love God? I don't want to love the God you love because you ain't doing nothing different than I'm doing. You just put a title. I'm a Christian. Oh, wow. I told you, I ain't no Christian. I live Christ's life. Come on. Okay. It's a big difference. Yes. Jesus. You say you believe in God. You say you love Jesus. But you ain't convincing nobody. They weren't very convincing that they love Jesus. Because, see, if they love Jesus, they would live a life as a true example. These people were imposters. Oh yeah, we going deep. Hallelujah. Imposters to their core. We fake real good, y'all. Yep. We dress up, we come to church, we want to play the role that, that we that. love our neighbor. Yep. So you get car I can't stand that. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Tear folks down. Always looking for something wrong with them. You ain't never complimenting. Wow, you know she used to really struggle with that. Right. And now she really in there doing her thing. Amen. Yo, my brother, he used to have a wandering thus far. Man, he been real straight. He be coming in. I be seeing him giving God praise. He ain't creepy no more. He ain't side eyeballing the females. Listen. <laughs> Oh, 
some of us as impostors. Don't you know what? And you make Jesus sick. Amen. He said, you make me sick enough that I want to vomit you out of my mouth. Oh, no, yes. Lord Jesus. Oh, no. Who are you really representing, Lord saints? Jesus. Huh? Beloved, we are in the last hours. We ain't got time to play no more. We all got excuses. Ain't nobody going to live a perfect life. Right. That's right. But you got to let some kind of fruit show. Amen. Amen. You got to, listen, if you ain't got no self-control, then you ain't got nothing else. Because your self-control is what's keeping you connected to Jesus. Amen. You represent God proudly, or are you really representing Satan, Baal? Huh? If you ain't representing Satan, then quit playing Satan games. Amen. Quit Amen. hanging out with the world. Jesus. Quit acting like it's okay to be in the world. But you, oh, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. My citizenship is in heavenly place. How can I tell? You ain't brought nobody out the me to hell ever. You ain't trying to save nobody's soul. You ain't trying to get them to the word of God. You ain't taking them down to put them in the water to baptize them. You just going along with the program. Let me bless my food. Let me act like I love God. Is anybody getting in today? Give God some praise. We want to play that we love God. But you really an ambassador of religion. And you got a religious look. There is no greater curse upon the earth than a phony Christian, a phony believer, a, a churchy church, church folk who really isn't representing the true church of Jesus Christ. The disciples did not play. He pulled, they was, they was, uh, 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 thieves and uh, uh, fishermen, they were roughnecks, they was crazy. But when Jesus got through with them, they didn't look nothing like their original identity. Amen. 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 They were completely transformed. Yes, Lord. They didn't go back when Jesus left. They dug deeper. Yes. They went harder. Yes, Lord. They yes. wanted it. They were hungry. Didn't nobody have to say, oh, well, we need to go find another teacher. Right. We need to go find another pastor. We need to go to another church. Right. We need to go find another conference. Come we on. need to go to another prayer shut-in. We need to go to another deliverance. Come on. We need to go to Listen, we ain't got no time to play, folks. If you in this house, God loves you so much. He said, you're part of our witness. And I need you to get your act together and get back in position. I don't care how far you done fell away, how lost you think you are. All you got to do is repent. Just because you know a little bit about Jesus. And you think that you know enough about him, but can't nobody tell you nothing else about him. Uh -oh. So you ain't receiving nothing. Mercy, Lord. You know who God is. You know, oh, you can't preach to me. I know the word. Uh -oh. Oh, come on. Come on. You can't, how you gonna minister to me? I teach this thing. Jesus. Spirit of pride, I rebuke you yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Come on. Yes. How dare you exalt yourself? Mm. Huh? Student is never greater than the master, and the master is never greater than the student. You should always be having a teachable spirit. You should always want to sit down and absorb what can you learn. Because you get to a place where can't nobody tell you nothing. It's a dangerous place. You done made up in your mind, I'm where I'm at, and I'm content.
content. Terrible. I don't need to do nothing else. I, I've made it. Ooh, How dare you? Huh? Let me tell you something. You ain't, you are not there. You have now unknowingly slipped into a dangerous place. And you might as well tell your sinful uh, uh, neighbor to move over because you're moving in with them. Jesus. Help us, Lord. I want to tell you something about sinners. Sinners, lost souls, broken people. They have more respect for Jesus than those yes. that have a form yes. of godliness and deny the power thereof. Yes. Because they will talk to somebody homeless and they will be propositioned with the word of God and they will yes. tell you, I'm not going to play with Jesus because I know I'm not ready for it. So I'm not going to give my life to him right now because I'm still caught up in this life. Yes. That is true. That's true. I ain't going to play with God. Oh, they were 
was rich. <laughs> they had creature comforts. And then they wanted to compare their walk with Jesus and thought they were in a good place because they had creature comforts and they didn't need nothing. They was fools. Straight fools. Because you prosper physically, financially, materially, they became content. Ooh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I don't need nothing. You're lukewarm. You're now stuck somewhere in the middle. And this definitely is not a good place to be at all. Being a warm and fuzzy Christian does absolutely nothing for the growth of God's kingdom. Nothing. You want to go dig in somebody else's garden? You want to go start stealing from their fruit? It doesn't help your personal garden. It doesn't help your personal fruit grow. It's time to quit being a seat warmer. Same people in the same seats. Why y'all think I rotate you so much? So you don't get comfortable. Amen. Hmm? Oh, this is my seat. Your behind is imprinted in that chair with your name on the back of it? Absolutely not. I remember people used to get really perturbed about me. You sitting over here today. I want you back there. Do, 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 do. And they looking at me like, she done lost her? I know I have it. Strategy. God always has a strategy yes, for yes. his people. Amen. You let somebody sit in the same seat too long and they're going to get complacent. Yes. They're going to get comfortable. They're going to think that they don't got to do nothing right. new. They ain't got to work. They ain't got to pray. They ain't got to fast. They don't have to go into a quiet place and get in God. Somebody better be excited for the kingdom. Right. Somebody better be excited that God loves you this much. That he came in the house today to give you a real word. It's time for you to stop being a seat warmer. Or how about the spectators? Huh? You're coming to watch everything everybody else is doing. Well, you ain't doing nothing in your household. You sitting up telling everybody else what to do. How to fix this and how to fix that. But you can't fix your own house. Jesus, help us, Lord. You want to you wanna be a minister, but the Bible says in order to be a good teacher, you got to have your house in order. Amen. 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 You can't be teaching nobody and your house is raggedy and everybody in your house is walking around janky and funky and stinking. Can't do it. But you want to be in a position where you lay hands? And pray? Transfer all these demonic spirits? All these oppressive uh, uh, generational curses you functioning in? And don't even understand the spiritual warfare that surrounds you? Because you won't spend time with God alone. For him to show you. You got to go into a quiet place. Right. You want to be a visitor every now and again? Mm. Pop in and pop out. And you think that's going to be enough for you to be in God's good graces? Mm. Mm. Y'all getting anything? Yeah. 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 This was the final of the, 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 the seven churches. All right. God has started this year with teaching on the book of Revelation. Right. That should tell us something. Mm -hmm. We need to truly turn this thing around and get on fire for Jesus. Right. Yes. 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 You gotta remember, despite this being this wealthy, industrious city, they were poor in Jesus. It was frightening. We see ourselves as stellar students as disciples of Christ. And your name is barely even on the roll call of the book of life. Amen. What Jesus sees and what you see are very different. Many of us can't see in the spirit realm and yet we swear we can handle any kind of warfare that comes our way. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you back to the pit of hell. And you ain't doing nothing but binding them to yourself. 
You want to be refined, you're going to go through the fire. The only way you're going to be rich is rich in him. You want to wear the white garments, he will cover your shame forever. He will anoint your eyes with the salve that you may truly see in the spirit. Jesus is telling us right here, for those he loves, he rebukes and he chastens. He said, be zealous and repent. He is knocking at the door. Will you answer it? Beloved saints, the seven churches were warned. God made very sure that nobody that sovereign shepherd would have an excuse that you were well informed and why things have been happening the way they've been happening huh have have they been rebuked have you been chastened have things drastically shifted lately jesus is knocking on your door i want you to turn to your neighbor and say to them are you going to answer that are you going to answer that If you truly recognize exactly where you are at with Jesus, you will be able to move forward. You will not get stuck somewhere in the middle, saints. That is a dangerous place to be. Preachers professing they love God and they serve him. But on the other side, they say, oh, there's really no hell. There's a lot of preachers that don't preach on hell. Oh, yeah. That's right. And they're not even snatching nobody from going into the pit of hell. That's right. You got half awake men and women of God claiming how awesome Christ is, but their life still does not look like Jesus, but it looks like the world. They have been to every revival, every shut-in, every deliverance, and yet no one is coming out radical. Still somewhere in the middle. They want to minister, but there's no fire that will burn out sin in nobody's life. They won't set nobody's heart on fire. I'm almost done. Not enough fire to be a threat. Satan laughs in your face. You're not fervent enough to be seen as a living sacrifice to God because you're stuck in the middle somewhere in the middle. You want a position, but refuse to prostrate before the Lord. You desire acknowledgement as a God-fearing servant, but you will never submit or surrender to truly serve somewhere in the middle. Being seen at every event, but nobody is being healed, set freed, or delivered because they're somewhere in the middle. The same folks at every event, but their walk is identical. As a mirror of their life five years prior, because they're somewhere in the middle. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. He is knocking now. Open the door. No more time to be somewhere in the middle. Right. Amen. Right. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Somebody shout. Thank you, Jesus. If you didn't watch the whole series, 
I highly suggest you watch it because there was definitely something in there for every single person in this house. Amen. It's not a game. And God ain't playing no more. And he's calling us. And he's telling us, get your, get your house in order. People are not realizing how dangerous the world has become. People are not realizing you're the piece of the puzzle. And the enemy wants you to keep playing. I got time. I could do it later. I don't have to give up my trickery, my witchcraft, my suicide, my trying to deal and tap in with the dead people. Lord help us. My ancestors, burning sage, paying alms, libations to the dead, pour out a little right. bit of Do you understand that that is witchcraft? Yes. Pouring out liquor right. is a form of witchcraft, and most people don't even know that they that they're partaking of it. The devil is so crafty, y'all. Yes, he is. He is so crafty. He wants to deceive you. If you are sitting here, do you understand you are his beloved? Amen. Yes. And all the crazy stuff that you went through, you've heard. Yes. Because yes. he knew nobody could accomplish the job Thank better you than you. Yes. Because he wasn't looking for no weaklings. He was looking for the ones that been battered, bruised, stretched, broken, thrown away, hit, rejected, lost. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Because the power of God is in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I ask that you will open up the heavens in this place right here, right now. Father, I can't do nothing without you. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit will minister to your sons and your daughters. Father, I pray that you will just saturate the homes, the vehicles, the eardrums, the hearts of your people. Father, we lift up Maria and her household. Father, you know all petitions. Lord, you are the I am that I am. And I'm asking that you will raise up your daughter. Allow her to walk with a spiritual boldness. That she will not look to the left, look to the right, nor ever look back. Yes, Lord. Stay focused on what's in front of her. Yes. Father, I ask that you will give her supernatural endurance in this hour. I pray that you break every yoke of distraction off of her life off of her children, off of her future grandchildren. Yes. I lift up our beloved sister Liz and our brother Randy. Father, I pray right now that you will move over our brother and our sister, that you will touch him right where he is at. Father, as he lifts his hands to surrender, you know, He's not in the house. Your spirit is right there with him. Amen. Father, I'm asking that you will send holy fire. Yes. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy the Ruach of God. The very breath of God. The very breath that created a life. Adam, when you breathed into his nostrils. Yes. Father, breathe into Brother Randy right now. Breathe into all those that are on, on live, Father, and allow them to have a supernatural encounter with you. 
Father, remind them that they got to believe it to receive it yes. and receive it to believe it. Right here, right now, we touch and agree on one accord. Yes, Fire in the name of the Holy Spirit! It's broke. It's broke. Yes. It's broke. In the name of Jesus, generational curses breaking. We are my sickness breaking. Anxiety breaking, depression breaking. Desperation is breaking. Double mindedness is breaking. Oh, have your way, Holy Spirit. Touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, if there is any on live that don't have a church home, Send them, send them on over to Sovereign Shepherd. Father, let them stop being spectators, but let them join a household of faith. Lord, let them be covered. Let them know that this is a house of prayer. This is a house of miracle signs and wonders. Father, I ask if they don't know Jesus, Lord, send them over, and I'll be happy to pray with them. We bless you, we honor you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.